What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, another town hall. And so we are going to do our five biggest takeaways. Again, this is not a summary, just the five things that stuck out to me the most. And this is for the town hall on May 9th, 2024. Now, before we jump into this, understand that uh, Matt was not able to attend this town hall. He did... Uh, announce it the day before, I believe, saying that, you know, something had come up and he jumped into the town hall chat. You'll probably see in a previous video, uh, the town hall kind of chat on Discord and started answering a bunch of questions there, which the team went through and read. But I got to give a shout out to both Nate and Investigator who carried the who carried the team today for uh, for the whole two hours. They did not cut it short. Uh, it was a good time. And there there wasn't much outside of outside of the usual. Right. Because uh, the things when it comes to answering questions. Uh, you know, Nate does a great job. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Nate does a great job of like having this awesome kind of overall vision of where he wants the game to go. But like Nate's Nate's like, you know, it's his visions are very grand. And when the, the difference between like him and Matt, I would say at this point, Matt has conditioned us uh, ever since becoming CEO to be very narrow and very limited in scope so that when he talks about like, yeah, we're working on this, we're working on this, we can actually expect that in the next, you know, one, two, maybe three months, right? He's, they're not talking, they're not giving timelines and they're not talking about anything else that is kind of, you know, too far out in the distance, but you get Nate on and Nate gets to talk about what his, you know, 10 year plan for, for, for Splinter Lens is. So shout out to both of them. It was really fun, uh, uh, obviously to hear it. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like when, when, uh, the teacher isn't there or the parents aren't home, right? So, uh, get to have a little bit of fun, uh, a little bit more of a casual type of town hall. And so I, I, I enjoyed it regardless. Now, that being said, as I said earlier, uh, I'm going to jump into the five things. This probably won't be very long because it was more informative and more of a hangout rather than, hey, there's a lot of stuff that you know needs to be discussed. But let's go ahead and jump in. We have the two releases. I'll start with the May 14th release, which is coming up just next week. And this is going to be a good one. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to actually jump to the bottom part first because we're finally getting land or land 1.6. The grain DEC LP is going live and I'm very curious to see what this can potentially do for DEC, which is still sitting about 25% below peg. Now, spoiler alert, I think it's not going to do anything. And I'm not trying to be negative just to be negative, but I think there's way too much grain out there. People have been farming it for six months at this point or almost six months at this point. And if you need grain, right, then you probably started producing it on your own or found a way to, uh, you know, get it from other people, even though I, I would assume most people are just farming it on their own and there's a massive, massive surplus. So sure, will some DEC find its way? Will there be some volume here and there? Potentially. But because of the fact that we know land seems to be so far out, uh, at least like the rest of 1.6 and uh, and then, of course, 2.0, which is where things get really get interesting. Um, I think it's great that the team is going to is is going to get it out. Right. It's long overdue. But I do think it's going to be a nothing burger in terms of the game economy. Now, the exciting stuff. Well, that is exciting. I don't want to downplay it. And shout out to Investigator and Cryptomancer who jumped in on the land side. Uh, but the game related stuff, the auto battler card game related stuff that's coming is more things, more items being added to the Glint reward shop, which is super exciting. So they are, I believe they said they're going get, to get rid of the random card draws. Uh, so, you know, like the master draw and all that where you don't know what rarity you can get. They're going to keep the guaranteed rarities, but then they're going to add back reward chests similar to what we had before. But keep in mind, these these reward chests should not have any SPS because all the, the SPS pool got added into the, uh, the, the ranked play, right, for both modern and wild. So you'll be able to get a bunch of other things uh, that, you know, was it merits, potions, reward cards, but... They've added a couple of other items. Energy, and, and this is an important part here because you can now get energy from the reward chest and your energy can actually go above 50. So the way that I'm understanding it is, you, and, and I saw I saw some uh, responses in the, the chat. Shout out to the support team. They were very responsive during the, uh, the town hall chat. Um, so the way that I'm understanding is that you cannot buy energy and you won't be like earning more energy if you're at 50 or above but you can get higher 
than 50 energy if you oh if you get it in a you know release or sorry not a release but uh, a reward chest so uh, you know i don't know what the maximum amount is maybe you don't play for like months but then you come in or maybe you don't play for like 48 hours right so you like fill up your 50 energy and then uh you just open up a bunch of chests and you get a bunch of energy you, you could probably be sitting on on maybe over 100 or hundreds I, I don't know at that point you could just play to your heart's content but keep in mind you're wasting energy still at that point because then you're not using you know you're not gaining the plus one per hour if you're over 50. but either way i thought that was a pretty cool thing that they're doing to you know incentivize people to play a little bit more and then the other item here jackpots are coming to those reward chest, which is really interesting because they added a couple of items, like they added packs, they added titles, they added land plots, right? So uh, again, these are all real tradable NFT items that is actually kind of exciting when you think about it because that is the one element that was missing. And I think what people will end up doing when the end of season rolls around, sure, you won't get a bunch, you won't automatically get a bunch of reward chests. But if you get, you know, a hundred thousand glint or fifty thousand glint, whatever it is, if you get a massive stack of glint at the end of the season, I think a lot of people will go just to just to try it out, just to be like, yeah, you know what? Let me buy thirty reward chests. And there's going to be different levels of them too. I believe there's three different levels from what they showed on the screenshots. Uh, so I'm sure I'm sure like the rarities are all going to be different on that. But they said there'll be a post. We'll go through that. We'll go through that when it's uh, you know given out in more detail. But either way, I thought that was really exciting. I think they're doing a fantastic job with the Glint Shop. I'm very excited to see the evolution in such a short time, which makes me even more excited to see where the Glint Shop could be and what it could include in the next six months, or we'll just say by the end of 2024. So that's the May 14th release. May 28th release, we did get a little preview here. It's going to be the Land 1.6 prefix titles. Uh, so that, again, I, I think... I don't know if that's going to be a nothing burger or not for the land economy. I do believe you're going to have some whales try to fight it out, but I haven't even checked the leaderboards yet to see if there are, you know, very clear winners at this point. That competition would be somewhat stifled. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say probably another nothing burger as well. Land is just land is just boring at the moment. And I know it's not boring for everybody. There's a lot of folks out there who are really into land. But I do think the fact that, uh, you know, obviously Far Patrol is no longer with the team. And the team has been very clear about the fact that land is just not the priority right now has, has killed a lot of the excitement around land. And uh, I, I don't think that's surprising. And it's just the unfortunate reality of where we are at. So those are the next two releases. I, you know, I want to say that when I uh, came out with my video for like my expectations on, on like what, you know, expectations for the next couple of months, having these two items for land were the 14th and 8th and 20th releases, right? So uh, I didn't, I didn't have any like inside information or anything, but it's cool to see that they're actually going to knock it out in the time frame that I was hoping for, which should leave June. Now keep in mind, which should leave June. Uh, if my if my predictions stay correct, hopefully we will get oops. Hopefully we will get a lot of the new player experience things. I, I, I'm actually still waiting for the one click set rentals. I want to see just how easy that makes life. But you know the one click set rentals and uh, the, the kind of like onboarding tutorial, which you know what wouldn't necessarily be for us, but for any new players coming in, uh, would definitely be helpful. Um, okay, so number three, this is just an idea, although it seems like it's an idea that's definitely in the conversation to be tested, is gold foil card draws in, in the Glint Shop. So what does that mean? If you want to get something that is gold foil, like guaranteed gold foil soulbound reward card, you can pay for that in Glint. Now, not the specific card and maybe not even the specific rarity, but if you want to pay, and you know, uh, Nate was saying like you could make it some exorbitant amount, but there are people out there who really want to collect only gold foils, and more importantly, they want to be able to play in gold foil tournaments and gold foil, uh, you know, brawls. The thing is, it's if it, if you leave it up to chance, it's like a very very tiny percent chance that you're ever going to get a fully max whatever in you know gold foil. Now you could wait to see. Um, at least for the current reward set, whenever that does become unlocked, you can go out and buy it. I, I don't know if they'll be at a premium or not, considering that the cards still were printed quite heavily, but we'll have to see what the unlock rate ends up being. But for maybe the newer cards, right, when the Rebellion uh, set does come out, uh, hopefully, you know, sometime this summer, 
you'd have to wait another what 12 to 18 months at that point which is going to be really tough so i i think that it's not a bad idea to test i hope they make it you know a lot <laughs> and i i know people are going to be opposed to this but i wouldn't mind having some things in the shop require both glint and be gated by vouchers in some sense right where it's like okay this is a premium item and i'm not saying gold fo fo uh, foil necessarily um but even still, if it was just like, you know, X amount of glint, something that's like exorbitantly high, and then it's just like one voucher, and that's just, you know, people would pay one voucher. Vouchers going for like two, three cents now anyway. I think people would pay for the chance if it's a premium item and you know you're going to get something good from it, right? I think that it would be worthwhile and it would add another consistent voucher sync. Again, maybe gold foil draws aren't the area, but again, I'm just always looking for voucher utility here because... Uh, I think we did lose a lot with the the the, the lack of mini set, and that, that was a, a separate video that we talked about. Um, a lack of mini set for Rebellion that is uh, currently not being planned. Okay, number four. This is actually a really good idea in my opinion. We have a couple of uh, proposals in the mix right now to try to help save Wild, and that is to implement some kind of collection power requirements for leagues. Now, Matt has come out and said he actually thinks that the low-level card penalty would be a better idea, and I can't say that I disagree with him. In fact, I, I very strongly agree with him in that sense. Just because the CP, it was so easy to, uh, you know, the CP system was very broken. You could just go rent, like, one alpha gold foil legendary, and you'd, be, you'd have enough CP to get into, like, gold, right? And the fact that cards are super cheap on the marketplace, like rental marketplace right now... Um, you know, a, a lot a lot of folks would be able to abuse that. Whereas the low level card penalty will require a lot of these low level bots, you know, all these level one cards that are getting up into the higher levels. What that will do is reduce the awards that they get, uh, rewards that they get. And then, of course, the pot becomes bigger for the people who are winning at the top that are probably the real accounts, right? All the people who are in champion that actually have champion level decks fighting against the level one cards that don't have champion level decks those cards will start to receive a proportionate amount to wherever their card levels are at. And that means that that, that will leave a lot more. Oh, here we go again with the Ys. Sorry, this is just, I have two keyboards here and one of them is not working. All right, let's leave that off for now. Um, so I think that that's a great idea. I hope that they implement that sooner rather than later. I don't know if Matt would need to go through and wait for some kind of proposal uh, simply because we have, you know, the, the two proposals for CP right now. If somebody needs to put it through, then, you know, I, Clayboyne, I nominate you. I don't know if you watch these videos or not, but I nominate you. And uh, I think that it should definitely be in the mix. Otherwise, I, I think that it's totally within the team's right to just go and, and implement that change. I think that, you know, this is not an SPS related thing. I think that if the... Well, I don't know. I, if you want to get community sentiment on it, then that's fine. We can run a proposal. But I, I do believe something needs to be done. And I think that the low-level card penalty implemented in Wild. And Matt, Matt said this, right? So this was uh, in one of the comments that he had left. He actually thinks that this is a, a, a better idea and that it should only be for Wild. So I, I'm very much in favor of that. I hope that they go ahead and just do it. But uh, if there's a requirement, if, if they want to wait for a proposal, then I think that this is something that the Dow or Clayboyne or somebody talk to Clayboyne and, and get this uh, implemented sooner rather than later. Uh, and then number five, there is a format for uh, modern, or, sorry, there is a survey for modern format that was floated around. Uh, Isaria posted the link in the Discord. Uh, I'll see if I can grab it real quick and post it in the in the. Uh, what's I called the, the discussion section or description of this video. Uh, if I forget, I apologize, but it's definitely going to be in the, the discord. They should really post it up in like the links or the official announcements page. Um, but again, you can just search Asaria in the town hall chat. She posted it there, I think actually uh, several times. And it's just to ask you what are the different, you know, what, what, what would make you want to play modern format more? So they have a bunch of different items there. It's just a survey that you can check. I, I'm highly recommending people go through and fill this out because I have to give a shout out to the the team for, for really listening and getting feedback from the community and turning around and making these changes. And Nate actually said this as well, right? So Royal Eagle and Lily Fire, both awesome people that I've gotten to know. Uh, you know, they're they're in Discord every day. They're they're, you know, in the social channels every day, just trying to get feedback, figure out what it is people want, and then actually work 
and fight, right, to implement that stuff in game. Nate was giving them a lot of kudos, and I just want to echo that because we've seen that, especially with this glint shop, right? All of these changes, the team came out just a couple of months ago with, you know, the, the reward shop. Um, actually, keep in mind, I think the reward shop first came out in in April, right? So we've only had a couple a couple of of uh, changes since then, or a couple of you know um, what's that called? Uh, release windows and maintenance windows since then. Yet the amount of changes that have happened have been significant, and and in my opinion, will probably still continue to be significant as they take this feedback. So, like I said, I just want to give them a shout out there because I think that they're doing a great job listening to the community right now. And if you want to have your voice heard. This is how they are asking you to say it. This is how they are asking you to give that feedback, uh, as well as not, I'll, I'll uh, echo something that um, investigator said just because I think it was important. If you have any bugs or fixes or suggestions, whatever it is, he was recommending don't go into the UX channel, go and open a ticket. It just helps filter into their system. So these are the ways in which the team is asking you to provide them feedback and for all of the people out there with a ton of opinions, right? This is your opportunity. Go in and give your opinion because these are the channels in which they are listening. They are inviting you to come in and speak your mind. So that is all I have for you guys in this video. Hopefully this was shorter and sweeter than usual, but the next town hall will be in a couple of weeks and I am very excited to see what is coming down the pipeline for June now. I know we're not there yet, but it looks like May is gonna be the month of LAN 1.6. I'm hoping June will be the month of, who knows, new player experience, soulbound, new soulbound reward cards, new soul, uh, soulbound unlocks. Uh, that would be kind of fun. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.